was discussing with my cousin this organization she had recently gotten a, a job at, Direct Relief, and we just really got into talking about uh, the fact that Direct Relief had prepared this huge uh, shipment of medical supplies to Liberia, and I had just finished a, both a movie and a book on Liberia. I was there um, a month before the Ebola outbreak broke out. And so I thought, well, you know, maybe we can um, re-edit the film just a little bit and make it a, a piece that you guys can use at direct relief. And so I got back in touch with Pauline and we talked about things that we could do as an organization uh, to help tell the story of direct relief. And the more I learned about direct relief, the more compelling the story it became. I mean, direct relief had set up an, a fabulously sophisticated uh, way of getting medical supplies, drugs, to people in the field that they had vetted. And to me, this was really important because over the years, I'd seen where some organization sends over, you know, a ton of medical stuff or food stuff, and as it pulls out of the airport, you know, they're hijacked by the local bad guys, and it never gets to the people it was intended for. But this system that has been set up by Direct Relief, with partners on the ground, made sure that what they sent got to where it was supposed to go, and that, that really fascinated me. I can tell you that having been around many nonprofits, that there's a level of, uh, of energy and commitment that is unique. Um, the people there are, are very special. That they've been around for a long time. They've been around, they were born <laughs> same year I was, um, in 1948. And so they've developed a, a, a way of utilizing all of the materials that are donated to them, so virtually 100%, of materials that are donated to them, medical stuffs and, and drugs, go directly into service. I guess what's impressed me the most about Direct Relief is their vision of understanding with real people there, real people that they vetted, um, the life and lifestyle of the people they're trying to help. Uh, it's pretty unique and inspiring. The films that we do, the books that we do, have two goals. They're to inform and to empower. When I sit down with my partner, John, and my partner, Milas, and we take a look at the different opportunities where we think we can make a difference, and we say, you know, we think we can tell this story, and we think that telling this story is going to help someone. It's a process. And for me, it's the process of life. It's coming up with an idea, figuring out how to do it. And my wife sees me come alive when I've got some planning to do. It's just the fire that, that keeps the old furnace going. When I was in the airline business, we were in the business for 20 years together, and it was a struggle. I mean, keeping an airline operating, raising money. And so, as a business guy, I'm always thinking two steps ahead of where I am. So I'm, I'm in New York, you know, and we're going to the World Trade Center to go meet with stockbrokers, and, and I'm not even paying attention to the street, and I could walk into a car and get killed. Uh, but I'm with my partner, and I look around, where is he? And he had stopped to help this elderly woman step into the crosswalk. And I thought, how oh, incredibly cool. I would never think to do that. I think we can all do things every day. And that's why the, the stories, the, the images I create, uh, the art that I do is aimed at uh, informing people so that they feel empowered. They don't have to wait. You know, and, and people wait a lot in our society, right? They, well, I'm not gonna get anything until I can get exactly what I want. But life goes on, and I can tell you at my age, and, and it goes on pretty quickly.